Kashmiris were ripped off their last standing right, the right to life, in Indian occupied Kashmir. As India repealed Article 35A of the Indian Constitution and deoperationalized Article 370. These articles had guaranteed the status quo to the Kashmiris as they conferred special status to the Kashmiris for the last hundred years plus. However, what we have seen is, of course, the writing of a new, new story. With a stroke of a single pen and the consensus of the far right, India's decision was made that Kashmir is to be annexed. So what does this mean for the Indian Ocean? Very simple. Number one, Indian Ocean, world's third largest ocean, consisting 20% of the world's Earth's water, overall occupying around 73.56 million square miles, the future tradeway, the access to global commons, all of this will stand challenged as we deal with the sanguine reality of a conflict in this region. And let me be very clear over here to state that perhaps Kashmir looks at this moment as a landlocked small issue which India is trying to suggest. The reality is far from it. It's a bilateral dispute consisting not just merely an issue of territory, but it is the issue of the people of Kashmir. And most importantly, it will also raise bigger questions if war breaks out what will be the consequences of the larger nuclear exchange in the Indian Ocean? In this regards, um, I will only end today's welcome remarks on one thought for everybody in this room and perhaps also for the rest of the world which is looking at this situation from a distant eye. And that is the story. And there's a vulture walking behind, waiting for that child to die and put that one away. Well, this picture was known as the vulture and the girl. His friends told him, don't pick up the child, you might have Ebola, you might have HIV, and you do not know what kind of diseases you might be having. And he committed suicide, and in his suicide note, he stated that one of my friends are or understand that the consequences of any conflict in the Indian Ocean moist the people of Kashmir who have engaged for the 52nd day in Indian Occupied Organization Bill, which has taken away the right of Kashmiris to be empowered in basic detention centers, foreign tribunal, foreign tribunals, and which will decide. Of course, uh, this conference is not just about human rights, what's happening in our oceans from the military term. What will be the implication? Actually, ready to understand that nuclear war is no one's war. It's I thank you all for your patience, and I hope that you will participate with this effort. Please raise your voice for the people. <laughs> this is a task given, so I'll endeavor my best to deliberate on that. Today's world 70% world trade, largest oil reserves, uh, almost 90% world oil trade, is invariably passing through this ocean. Unfortunately, the disturbing factor has been that the New Delhi's political military leadership is of the view that nine million people of Kashmir can be caged, legally disempowered, and wiped out of their existence in terms of legal terms. And Pakistan, home to 200 million people, is a representation of the realities on ground. And a misreading of Pakistan's commitment territory, not a fight for jurisdiction, it is a people's war for Kashmir, who are still waiting to stand against terrorism. It is in the ashes of 9-11 that New Delhi hoped that it could paint just and determined fight of the people of Kashmir for freedom and the structures of violence can no longer hold down. Henceforth, such extraordinary measures and such extraordinary force. Second assumption, which was built by the military consequential response from Islamabad. For each such false flag operation, the narrative had always been built around an alleged terrorist attack in India, which was linked to Pakistan. And in this ongoing context, the last endeavor was to create 